this morning, if you'll be finding in your copy of God's Word, John's Gospel, chapter 19, John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 28. We're now in part five of the series, Jesus Speaks from the Cross. John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 28. When you get there, if you're able, will you stand with me as we honor God and the reading of His Word? Hear the word of the Lord. After this, when Jesus knew that everything was now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there, so they fixed a sponge full of sour wine on hyssop and held it up to his mouth. May the Lord at his blessing the reading, the preaching, teaching, and your hearing to understand his holy word. May Jesus Christ forever be praised and all of God's people say, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask you to listen, listen fast this morning, if that's possible to do. We have been going through now the seven sayings of Jesus on the cross, and and we've seen or we've heard Jesus say to the the thief on the cross who was there beside him, this day I tell you, you shall be with me in paradise. We heard Jesus say to the Father, speaking about the crowd, and saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We were at the foot of the cross, and we saw there at the foot of the cross was Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene. There was the other Mary. There was uh, his his mother's sister, his aunt, and there was John, the beloved apostle. And Jesus said to Mary, Behold thy son. And he says to John, Behold thy mother. Last week we heard Jesus saying the, the Aramaic phrase, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani, which means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And now today we see One of the last things that Jesus said. One of the last things Jesus said was, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. And that's something that we can comprehend. That's something that we can identify with. You you do realize that Jesus got thirsty. Jesus, we've talked about this every week, that Jesus, though He is fully God, there's not one part of Jesus that isn't God. There's not one part of God that isn't Jesus. Jesus is fully God, but Jesus was fully man. We can think about it. We can identify with it when we think about, number one, we think about His thirst. Let's think about His thirst. Do you, I want you to get to your, in your mind, to a place where you were thirsty. Can you think of a place when you're thirsty? Um, It's getting garden season, and and I I love working in the garden. It's something that that energizes me, believe it or not. It's my therapy. It does me really good to work in the garden, but when I go down there, most of the time I'm going to put two or three bottles of water in the the side-by-side when I drive down to the garden. Why? Because I get thirsty. And when I'm down there in the garden working, and whether it's, it's hoeing a row or, or uh, whatever else it is that I'm doing, until you start having stuff come in, hoeing a row is just about all you do. Those of you who grow a garden, say amen. Until the stuff starts time to, to be picked, hoeing a row is just about all you do. And, and I tell my, here's what I tell myself. I'm hoeing a row, and I, I, I heal my stuff up, so maybe I'm using the, the garden rake to heal up the dirt on the row. And, and I tell myself, when I get... To the end of this row, I'm going to get a swallow of water. When I get, so, so I'm, I've got a goal there. See, I know I'm getting thirsty, but so when I get to the end of this row, I'm going to get to the end of this row, and then I'm going to, I know there's those bottles of water there in the side by side for me to get and drink. I'm getting thirsty. But <clears throat> what I told the children is true as well. Excuse me. How ironic. <clears throat> the more you think about something to drink, the more you want something to drink. 
Thirst is something that magnifies. Thirst is something that builds. Thirst is something that develops. And then if you don't meet that need, if you don't quench that thirst, it continues to grow. It doesn't go away, does it? Not unless you meet the need. As we're thinking about, number one, his thirst, can you imagine Jesus on the cross? Remember all that Jesus has gone through. Remember that Jesus, he was there in the garden as, as Hank sang about. And, and he was in such anguish knowing that our sins were going to be laid upon him. And he's kneeling there in prayer in, with such anxiety that his sweat drops become blood. He's arrested. He goes through a kangaroo court. He's beaten. He's mocked. They place a crown of thorns on his head. Do you think that all through this process, since the night before, do you think they've attended to any of Jesus' comforts? Do you think they stopped the, uh, when the guards beat him, before they even took him to be scourged? Do you think they, they stopped and said, wait a second, he hadn't had anything to eat or drink in a long time. Hey, would you like something to drink before we go on beating you? They probably didn't. He's gone through having the robe placed on him and the crown of thorns. He's gone through having the, the cross beam placed on his shoulders and, and carrying it up the Via Della Rosa and having people spit at him and pull out his beard and hair. He's gone through being nailed there on the cross. He's be, been there out in the sun. We don't know what the temperature was that day. We, we know that it got cooler because it got dark, the the sun was blotted out, but he's, he's been hanging up there and he's been bleeding and, and he's dehydrated and he's in pain. And we see that humanness. I'm thirsty. We, we've probably never experienced anything like his thirst, but he was thirsty. Think about this for a moment. Jesus said, I'm thirsty. But he made the Mississippi River. Jesus said, I'm thirsty. I need a drink of water. Yet the Jordan River flowing down in that valley, he carved it out. He said, I am thirsty. Yet the very molecular structure of water, two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, it was Jesus in the creative act Jesus, who bound each of those atoms together to make water itself. He is the creator of water. Colossians chapter 1, if you want the reference on it. He made water. Every drop of water belonged to Him. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Every drop of rain belonged to Him. Every trickle of water in every stream belonged to him. He owned every bit of it. And yet on the cross, he was thirsty. I thirst, he said. I thirst, yet he made the rivers. We think about his thirst. Then we think about our thirst. Can you do that with me for a little bit? Just for a few minutes. There was another time that Jesus was thirsty. You heard me talking to the boys and girls about it in the children's moment. And Brother Eric has preached a great message on this before about the woman at the well. And Jesus is there in the middle of the day and, and there's this woman and you shouldn't be there in the middle of the day to draw water, but she's there and I'm not going to re-preach his sermon. But Jesus asks her for a drink of water. And I tell you what, let's do. Let's just get... This account, if you're in uh, chapter 19, flip over to chapter 4 in John. Chapter 4 and verse 10, and, and listen to this interaction. Chapter 4, John 4, verse 10. And Jesus is talking to the woman here. And the, the woman has said to Jesus, you know, you're, you're a Jew. You don't ask a Samaritan woman like me for a drink of water. I mean, that's just improper. What? Something's very different here. And verse 10, Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. 
Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and livestock. Verse 13, and Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again, ever. In fact, the water I will give him will become a well of water springing up within him for eternal life. Sir, the woman said to him, give me this water. Our thirst. Our thirst can be physical like we talked about and and probably there will be a line at the water fountain after the sermon is over with. But you understand that thirst is realizing in your body that there's something that is not in your body or there's not enough of something in your body in you and it's out there and you've got to get the thing that you need in you that is out there in you. There's a spiritual thirst. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl was designed for a relationship with God. Everybody here today, God designed you to have fellowship with Him. God designed you to walk in fellowship with His Holy Spirit. And people today still have the sense of thirst. They, they look at their life and they realize something is missing. Now, a lot of times, and you know this to be true as well, they try to fill the void, they fill the emptiness with something else. Maybe it's... Uh, they, they go the, the other route for thirst. They fill it with, with drugs or alcohol to, to numb the pain and to take away the feeling of emptiness, but it comes right back. Maybe there are, you try to fill it with material things. If I could just get this next plot of land, if I could get ten more acres of land, that'd be all I need. I wouldn't want anything else. Or if, if I could just get this debt paid off and get $50,000 in my savings account, I would have everything. I wouldn't want anything else. Sometimes people fill up, listen to me, every man, woman, boy, and girl, right here, right here. Sometimes people are thirsty spiritually. And they try to get their life so busy they forget about it. They try to put so much in their life to make them forget about the fact there's something missing. They go running after everything that's out there, but what they really need is to get more of the Holy Spirit in here. It'll never quench your thirst. It'll never satisfy your thirst. Your thirst can only be quenched by Jesus. And Jesus says, if you ask me, I will give you living water. And the living water will not just quench your thirst. Jesus said to the woman at the well, he said, the water I give you will become in you. In you a well springing up of living water, a well of eternal life, a a well of water that will never run dry. How many of you are old enough to remember the well running dry? A few of you. At at my house, I have uh, three, really two, one uh, springs that run into my pond. One of them branches off, but it's coming from the same source. And And, you know, last year it got dry. Those springs keep on running in to the pond. And it kept on running into the pond even after it got dry. But it got so dry that they eventually stopped. In the middle of summer, when when everybody else's cow ponds have, have started drying up, and you see the buzzards out there in the pasture eating the brim that have died because the pond's turned over. That's real appetizing, huh? But but my pond, until it got, I mean, to the very depth of the drought, I mean, late in the drought, until that spring stopped running, one spring kept on running, until that spring stopped running, I had water going out of my overflow, even in the middle of the summer. 
It was a, a well of water that was overflowing. Do you realize what Jesus is saying here? Jesus is saying, I'm not just going to give you a little cup of water. I'm not going to give you a big, a big gulp of water. I'm going to give you the water of life so much so that it's not only filling you up, it's not only quenching your thirst, it is overflowing from you. That's, that's what Jesus does. Not only is Jesus always enough, it's over and abundant what we need. If you've got a thirst, only Jesus can quench it. There was another man in the New Testament that was thirsty. And church history and church tradition calls him, by, we don't have his name in the New Testament, but it's Luke 16, the rich man, Dives, Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus, the poor man, died, and the Bible says that he was in Abraham's abode. He was there with Father Abraham in paradise, and the rich man died also, the Bible says in Luke 16. Jesus tells us this. And the rich man, it says, was tormented in hell. And the rich man looks up, and, and so we get this picture that, that there is... There is the place of punishment and the place of reward. And there's a great gulf, a great chasm fixed between the two. And the rich man who is in flames in hell, he looks up and sees Lazarus there with Father Abraham. And he cries out, Jesus says in Luke 16. He says, Father Abraham, can you just dip your finger in the water and come and cool my tongue? With just, can I have just a drop of water? Because I'm tormented in these flames. That's one of those images in the New Testament that are it's absolutely stunning. Here's what's even more stunning about the rich man. The rich man who was thirsty in hell. He never got his drop of water. Because Abraham said, you, you could have chosen in life to be where Lazarus now is. Lazarus is here with me. He is comforted. And between you and I, a great gulf, a great valley, a great chasm is fixed so that no one where you are can come to where I am and no one where I am can go to where you are. We are divided and we are divided eternally. Here's what I want you to see as I close. The rich man in hell is still thirsty today. He never got his drop of water. Not because Abraham wasn't compassionate, but because the great chasm is fixed. You can have your thirst quenched today. Your spiritual thirst quenched so that you can know that you will never be thirsty like the rich man in hell. The Bible says in Revelation 22, in describing what heaven is like, there is the, the river of water of life flowing from the throne of God. Water of life. And on either side of the river is the tree of life, which bears 12 different kinds of fruit, each one different each season. The, the choice when we think about our thirst is that we can have a home in heaven where there is the river of water of life flowing for all time. And there is the tree of life with 12 different kinds of fruit and its leaves are for the healing of the nations, the Bible says. Or we can continue in our spiritual thirst and never have Jesus quench our thirst and we can be like the rich man in hell. And just crying out, if we could just have just a drop of water, because I'm tormented in these flames. Are you thirsty?
Has Jesus quenched your thirst? You say, Pastor, you, you've got me on the hook here. Tell me, how can Jesus give me the river of the water of life? Friends, what we've been talking about these last five weeks, that's why Jesus came and died on the cross. So that he could take away our sins. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none of us any better than anybody else. We've all sinned. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. By placing your faith and trust in him, he'll take away your sins. They're gone. Okay? Listen, it's, it's, it's good. The, the Bible says that he takes away our sins and he, and he puts them not up in the cupboard so he can go get them when we need to remember them. No, he says, I cast them into the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. And he replaces it by giving us the river of the water of life. I think that's part of even the imagery of baptism. The water. Acts 22 says... What are you waiting for? Rise up and be baptized, washing away your sins by calling upon his name. That's what the Bible says in Romans. That everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you thirsty? Today, in our time of invitation... Pastor Eric and I will be standing down front here. We'll have our Bibles. We will pray with you. We'll show you how you can know today that Jesus is your Savior and that heaven will be your home. We'll pray with you about whatever you need prayer about. The altars will be open. You can come and kneel and pray. You can come forward in the invitation seeking believers' baptism. If you need to be baptized, you can join this church by, by letter or statement or baptism. You have an opportunity to do business with God this morning. Heavenly Father, I pray that all those who are thirsty today will have that thirst quenched. Lord, let your Holy Spirit draw. Have your will and your way in this invitation, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand? Have you been to Calvary?